Welcome to the channel, friends. So today in the garage, I plan on discussing 15 tips for plowing with your ATV. Now this is going to apply if you plan on buying a plow for your ATV, or you already have one and you have some experience already. So I've gathered this information over the past three, four years, uh, plowing with my ATV. I have a 66 inch Glacier Pro HD with the poly face. Uh, which is attached to my XP1000 Polaris, and it does a great job. I'm really happy with the amount of snow it can push uh, in one pass, and being a 1000cc, it has plenty of power to do so. So let's get into the list I have here of 15 tips. Now, these are not in any particular order. I just started writing them down as I came up with them. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and read off the list. And like I said, no particular order. So the very first thing is you're gonna want to upgrade your skid shoes. Now, the skid shoes that come with the Polaris HD Pro are nothing pro about it. You know, they are very, um, very thin and they will wear out. Mine wore out within two months of using it, maybe three, four times. So the Polaris ones that came with the plow, they're junk, in my opinion. I went ahead and upgraded to a set of like quarter inch thick skid shoes that I found on eBay, which were marketed as aftermarket and heavy duty. Uh, those lasted longer, they lasted me a whole year, but then the same thing happened, they snapped off. They end up grinding to the point where they come to the stud of the mount and then they just, the shoe will snap right off and then you got no skid shoe. So what happens when you break off your skid shoe is not good. It's gonna end up rubbing into your wear bar more. It's gonna wear that out at a faster rate and it's gonna rub into your frame and grind into your frame of your plow. So keep an eye on those skid shoes. Make sure they are still there or buy some backups. It's up to you. Um, I plan on maybe making some upgraded skid shoes which are gonna be like 3 8 steel plate and then I'll use the Polaris stem mount and I'll just weld it to that with some gussets. So I might make those in the future and also uh, some other upgrades in the plow that I will be talking about soon. But let's go on and move on to the next one. So driveway transition slash edge damage. Now what I'm talking about is where your street meets your driveway, there's a seam there. Okay, if your driveway is new, you don't have to worry about it. It's pretty much gonna be seamless. You can have a good, easy transition. But on my driveway, there's like almost a one inch gap between the street and my driveway pavement where it starts. I have a 900 foot paved driveway. But the problem is I have to plow the driveway from the street in, okay? Because just because of the geometry of that kind of transition, I have to, Kind of drive out. I cannot go fully out. Okay, so I, I have to pick up my blade, go across that transition, come back in from the street in to my property and plow it that way and kind of make passes and, and build up banks to either side. Now, if I go the other way, like going out, like I'm leaving my driveway, it is going to catch the blade and it's gonna trip the blade and it's gonna gouge up that seam even more and make it even bigger than one inch. So I learned that really quick. The first pass I made, I hit that seam and I, it tripped the blade really, really violently. And I was like, okay, I can't do that. And I saw a little chunk of like asphalt pop out of the ground. So, so to prevent damage, you're gonna have to come up with your own plan or strategy to plow your driveway. I can't tell you uh, this method is gonna work for all driveways because like I said, every driveway is different. So that's something you will have to learn as you go. Moving on to the next one, tire chains, all wheel drive, and good tires. So my stock tires were Polaris PXT tires, and they did really well, okay? But not until I got my Blackwater Evolutions, which you see right here. These are 28 inch. The stock ones were 25 that came on the Hunter. When I got these, and I did my first snow plow, which was like a couple of weeks ago, I was so amazed that this thing hooks up so well. They key into the ground, they key into the into the snow when you kind of drive off your driveway into the lawn and, and push those extra snow banks further in, further out. 
um, they really hook up well, especially along with a clutch kit, which is important if you go bigger. But, but good tires is really important. But I don't find the need in my situation to use tire chains. You might need to use tire chains depending on the type of driveway you have. If you have gravel or dirt, uh, and you got a kind of real country looking driveway where it's really rough and not really uh, graded or anything, you're gonna have to possibly use tire chains uh, and definitely all wheel drive or four wheel drive on your machine. Uh, it just makes for better plowing when you're in four wheel drive. You really, you don't wanna plow in two wheel drive unless it's like an inch or two of snow. But get yourself a good set of aftermarket tires like the Blackwater Revolutions or even these tires right here which are the Duro Power Grip V2s that come stock on the Premium Trail. That's a 2020 model. And uh, I'm really impressed with those tires. They, they hook up so well. They are a Bighorn 2.0 uh, variant or clone, if you want to call them. But they're actually just as expensive as the Bighorn 2. In actuality, those tires are really good tires for stock tires. And I really enjoy driving on those because they're really smooth and they have insane grip. I would say just as much as the Blackwaters, but the Blackwaters uh, have deeper lugs and more open lugs for like kind of mud and uh, more serious terrain. So with that being said, the tires are important. You know, um, you don't know till you actually know, right? You know, you, you get a new set of tires and then you're like, wow, those stock ones absolutely suck, <laughs> you know? And uh, aftermarket tires are just so much better. Even though they cost, you know, five, $600, these things are gonna be worth it and you just get so much more performance out of your ATV and plowing. So uh, I'm really happy with those. So moving on, let's see. Uh, next topic is load gear. So obviously when you're going in the forward direction, always low gear. Never put this thing in high gear. You're gonna burn out your belt or you're gonna slip the belt a lot. You can, you're just gonna wear it out. So just don't do it. Always keep it in either low gear or reverse and you'll be good. You'll have plenty of power to push as much snow as you want. Uh, this machine here, I mean, I can drive this thing up snow banks pushing snow. It has no problem. It has plenty of grip, and um, when you put that thing in low gear, it just hooks up, especially with the clutch kit, which is another topic I'll get to. So moving on to the next topic, we have power angle on your plow. So that is an electric hydraulic unit that attaches to the frame of your plow uh, that will pivot it with a switch on your handlebars. This is the most handiest feature of, um, of having a plow. You do not want to get off your machine and adjust a manual lever to adjust the angle of your plow as you're plowing because I couldn't even tell you how many times I adjust the angle with the switch via handlebar uh, on the fly as I'm plowing. You know, it just comes in handy just having that ability to on the fly just switch it. Uh, you would get off your machine at least two to 150 times if you had to manually adjust the angle in your plow. You're, I'm constantly adjusting it, honestly. I'm adjusting it as I'm driving, I have it pushing one way, then I see um, like a pile of snow in the driveway and I'm like, okay, I wanna switch directions and I'll start angling it as I'm driving the ATV. So it comes in handy having the ability to power angle your plow on the fly. The Polaris unit is about five, $600, so uh, it is kind of pricey just for the electric hydraulic add-on, but it is so much more worth it. You do not want to be getting off your machine when it's freezing out to adjust that angle. You just don't, okay? That's the very first thing you should do when you buy the plow. I highly recommend it. So, moving on again, we have the rubber flap slash deflector. So on the top of my plow, I have a rubber flap that hangs over the top. Now, this actually is really handy. This is something else I also bought with the plow when I, when I first bought it. Um, so this prevents the snow, if it's lighter snow, or any kind of snow in general actually, even wet snow, it contains it. So it keeps it down away from blowing over the plow edge and into your face and onto the ATV. So it is very useful. It comes in handy and um, it definitely works and functions the way it should. So this is something you definitely want to get on your, on your plow system is that rubber kind of flexible plow edge or 
deflector that hangs off the top. I know it looks kind of ugly, but you know, it actually does work very well. So moving on, next is going to be possibly a poly scraper. Now, do you need a polyurethane wear bar on your plow? Uh, it's very possible. Um, I just recently uh, did a video on adding a poly edge on my Polaris plow. So keep an eye on that video. It should be out uh, right now. But anyways, poly edges on your plow will help with wearing on your driveway. So the idea is that if you want to protect your driveway and not um, kind of have it damaged by the plow edge, which is steel in most cases, um, a poly edge is the ticket. Essentially, people say it lasts longer and this and that because it glides over because it's a lot thicker. It's usually like three quarters of an inch to an inch wide versus just a, a like a you know a quarter inch of steel wear bar uh, thickness. So I haven't had too much time on mine yet to really tell you which is better. But if you have pavers, you're gonna need a poly edge hands down. You do not want to run any kind of steel edge or steel skid shoe on your pavers. If your driveway is asphalt, gravel, or dirt, you'll be fine with the steel all the way around. But if you have pavers or anything kind of delicate like that, you're gonna have to get a poly edge. So I will have um, videos coming up of the poly edge in action. I have um, that already on my plow, so I'm, I'm really excited to kind of try it out and see how long it lasts. That's my major concern about it, is like how long is this blade this plastic blade gonna last um, but but I will keep you guys posted on uh, more videos and more information on the poly edge because that's something that is kind of something new to me but I know for sure if you have more delicate driveways you're gonna have to get a poly edge hands down so next thing is okay safety lights so depending on your property and how many you know cars are going by on the street you might want some safety lights or a beacon on your ATV or strobes or something to uh, just to be safe. You know, when you're out in the street, I know I go out in my street a lot when I'm doing the driveway. And, um, you know, if a car was going by, it's, it's, you know, it's easier for them to see you if you have lights on or flashing lights of some sort. But I live in like the rural area where there's not a lot of cars going by, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, but, you know, there, there are reflectors on your ATV, but it's just better to have some kind of beacon amber or white light or whatever, it would be helpful to make people more aware of your whereabouts if you were in the middle of the street with an ATV and a plow. So that's just another added safety measure and it's good to have depending on the location of your driveway. If you're in a city, it's probably a good idea. All right, so moving on to the next one, we have heated grips, throttle and covers. So. Heated grips and heated thumb is going to be um, a, a big joy to have while you're plowing. So make sure your machine has that. <laughs> I cannot tell you how important uh, and how nice that is to have heated grips and a heated thumb when you're out there in uh, you know 10 degree weather, 20 degree weather. You know your gloves will get saturated with snow and get wet, and then get really cold, and your hands will get numb, obviously. Uh, so get yourself some heated grips or a heated thumb. They also make uh, covers that go over your handlebar grips that like kind of are neoprene and or like a canvas material. Uh, cold pin makes uh, a set. They're really nice. You know, they kind of zip up and, and cinch over your handlebar grip area and fully encapsulate your hands uh, when they're in there. I had those, but you know something? I did not like the way they felt. I could not see my controls. You know, if that's the thing. You, you, as soon as you put those covers on there, you cannot see anything. You know, you don't unless you're so good at you know muscle memory. You know exactly where everything is. The thing is about them, you end up going in and out of them to the point where it's pulling your sleeve up on your jacket, and it's very uncomfortable, and it's constantly you know shifting your jacket around and your gloves, and it just it's, it ends up being a pain. So I ended up taking them off and um, just going with the heated grips and the heated thumb. I, I'm satisfactory with that. So that works out well. 
All right, so moving on to the next topic, and that is machine weight and horsepower with larger plow. So if you have an 800 or above CC ATV, uh, it's very possible for you to push a larger plow than just four foot or the 52 inch that uh, what they normally come with. I have a 66 inch Glacier Pro plow in mine, and it, it gets pushed very well by this XP1000, which has 90 horsepower. So with me sitting on top of it, I'm like 210 pounds, the ATV is like 800 something. That's well over a thousand pounds of weight. And with 90 horsepower, it has plenty of torque and, and horsepower to be pushing that size of a plow because the wider you go, you're gonna accumulate more snow and you're gonna have a lot more weight in front of you. So you have to have the horsepower to be able to push it. It's just, it's simple as that. Uh, you know, if you have like a 400 or Anything that you know below an 800 cc, I would stick to the normal size four foot or 52 inch. Uh, don't get anything bigger than that. You're just gonna end up, uh, you know. The thing is, you go wider, then you're gonna you're not gonna be able to plow as tall. So because you're just gathering more snow. So bigger plows are reserved for like 800 and higher cc ATVs. You know you can try it, but it's not gonna be it's not gonna go well because you're just gonna get frustrated. And you're going to end up, uh, you know, using your snowblower. So, <laughs> all right. So next topic will be synthetic rope and the winch saver. Polaris recommends uh, when going to a plow to change out your steel cable to a synthetic rope because it's just more durable in, in that type of condition and that type of work. Uh, the synthetic line, honestly, is better all the way around. It's more lightweight. It transfers less energy when it snaps. So. I've had this actually happen to me. Uh, my synthetic line snapped and all that happens is that it retracts back and kind of coils back down to the ground. If you had a steel cable, it would whip, okay? Which is what you don't want. So it transfers energy in a much more safer way and it's better for plowing. It's, it's recommended by the manufacturers. And also you'll want a winch saver on the end of your rope behind the grab hook. That way when you crank that thing in, it doesn't crank into the fair lead and screw up the um, the eyelet or screw up the rollers on the fair lead. So it really is a good peace of mind to have that winch saver behind your grab hook on your ATV winch. It comes in handy and it looks good too. So next thing will be driveway accelerated erosion. So plowing on your driveway with anything, okay? Even an ATV plow is going to erode the top gravels on your driveway a lot quicker than you would if you were just, say, snow blowing. The snow blower only weighs like a couple hundred pounds versus an ATV with a plow attached to it. Okay, now you're grinding into your driveway, eroding the top surface, and yes, the, the gravels will pop out the top of that, that surface on your driveway. So after a season of snow plowing, go take a look at your driveway. It's going to have all sorts of pits and holes in it where gravel has been ripped out from the plow. Now the same thing happens if you plow with a truck, just worse because the, the plow truck is um, a lot more heavy and uh, the plow on the truck is about six, 700 pounds versus, I don't know, 150, 200 pounds, one being on the ATV. So. Accelerated erosion of your driveway is just kind of, it's part of the game. You know, it's going to happen. There's no way around it unless you get like a poly edge or something, or you just, um, you know, make some poly skids. But if you have steel on your plow, you can guarantee that your driveway is going to get chewed up. Okay. Uh, you know, if you have like gravel, dirt driveways, uh, you probably don't have to worry, but if you have gravel, a big issue with plows is that you will end up pushing your gravel all over the place and, and then just re-graveling every single spring because the gravel just can't stay still until it freezes. But um, biggest thing is asphalt driveways, even like, you know, concrete sidewalks will get eroded from the steel on the plow. So some people aid and remedy this by, like I said, putting poly edges and poly skids. I've even seen like um, Kubota tractors with the PTO blowers 
have all sorts of poly edging on it and poly wear bar and everything, poly skids, as well as the rear blade in the back, the angle blade, have a big poly edge on it as well. Um, I saw this at Walmart, so they're probably doing a lot of concrete and sidewalks, all the walkways around the parking lot. So I'm pretty sure someone told them, hey, you can't be scratching up and gouging up our, our sidewalks and, and pavement with your machine. So that's how you would remedy that. So driveway accelerated erosion is a real thing, and uh, most people uh, really aren't too concerned with that. They'll end up seal coating it or getting it repaved or whatever, but if you have a brand new driveway, it's definitely worth um, keeping an eye on the accelerated erosion that you're causing. So, moving on, we have clutching and clutch kit. So, if you have a stock machine, you'll, you're going to be okay with the stock clutching, you know, clutch kit on your, on your machine. But if you uh, step up to larger tires and you're doing snow plowing, you're going to want a clutch kit and make sure that it's um, adequate enough for what you're doing because uh, the bigger tires and heavier tires put a bigger strain on the clutch and you'll end up slipping the clutch more along with an addition of a snow plow. So uh, one good thing is uh, to test this out is, uh, you know, put it in low gear, and uh, does it grab? Can you spin the tires on your machine when it hits a snowbank? If you can spin your tires, that means you have a good clutching on your machine and you're adequate for the setup you have. But if you, you can't spin the tires and your machine is revving and you just hear a bunch of noise and nothing's happening, no, no tires spinning, um, you need a clutch kit for sure. Even these big black waters that have so much grip, when I, when I plant into a, a big snowbank, I can still spin all four tires on this because I'm generating so much power and torque through the, uh, the Polaris uh, variable transmission. So that's a good indicator that my clutch kit is working. So that's something you want to keep an eye on when you start adding bigger tires and all these different accessories and then plowing and then all this stuff. Uh, it puts a lot more strain on the clutch and you want to make sure that you have uh, the proper setup. All right, so the last topic that I'm gonna talk about is side markers. This is very helpful because it allows you to know what angle your plow is at without getting up off the machine. And what I'm talking about is leaning forward and putting more weight to the front of the machine versus where it should be planted towards the rear for traction. That's the case with me. I was finding myself getting up off the seat all the time and getting up and down, up and down off the seat and I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Why am I like just getting up to see what angle the plow is at? Uh, the side markers help with that because you can see the ends on it. You know, if it's tilted this way, if it's tilted that way, you know exactly where it is. And you're still sitting how you should be, planted with your butt on the seat towards the rear of the seat. So it helps with two things. Like I said, traction because you can throw that balance of the weight back towards the back end of the ATV. And you can see the orientation of the plow. So at first I thought it was going to be a pain in the butt to have those on there because I would be hitting stuff. And um, then I realized that it's kind of important to have them on there because I, that way I can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm going to run them this season. I have a brand new set of KFI side markers I put on there. And uh, they look really good. They match the Polaris blue. So I'm really happy to use them. But really handy. I mean, they weren't that expensive. They are like 20 bucks or something. I think even less than that. Uh, but... It's going to allow me to like just sit down and enjoy the plowing more versus constantly getting up looking, constantly get, you know, getting back down and looking and, and kind of guessing where I'm at. And, you know, it's just going to make life a lot easier. All right, so those are the 15 tips that I have for snow plowing. And I really hope you enjoy this video. And if you have any questions or comments, please place them right down below. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.